Good morning everyone. Today we're going to experiment with the SN74 LS164N. That is a serial in parallel out shift register. Now there's eight outputs and these LEDs right here are tied to the outputs so that this first LED is the Q0 output, then Q1, then Q2, then Q3, Q4, Q5, Q6, and finally Q7. Those are the outputs. This push button right here is the serial input push button. When the button's not pushed, a logic zero is applied to that serial input. When I push the button, a logic one is applied to that serial input. This button over here is the clock input to that IC. When I push the button, the clock input goes from a zero to a one. And when I release the button, it goes from a one to a zero. And that will clock this data into the shift register. I'm going to push the serial in push button, applying a logic one to that serial input. You can call this the data pin, the data push button. I just push the clock, and you can see that Q0 has gone high. Let's shift it through that IC. Q1 has gone high, and Q0 has gone low. Q2 has gone high, Q1 and Q0 have gone low. Q3, Q4, Q5, Q6, Q7. And all the data bits before have gone low. Now all outputs are low. Let's enter 2. And we'll shift those through. How about three? Here's four. We can even alternate. There you go folks. At the end of the video, I'll put my drawings of this circuit up so that you can breadboard and perform your experiments. Have a good day folks. Have a good day. And we'll see you next time. Evening all. Let's take a look at the circuit that we used to test the SN74 LS164N serial in parallel out shift register. Let's start with the master reset on pin 9. It is active low indicated by this bar over master reset. I have an RC network so that when 5 volts is applied to the circuit, pin 9 
master reset bar is low through this one microfarad 63 volt capacitor and as that capacitor charges up through this 10 kilo ohm resistor pin 9 will gradually go high bringing this IC out of reset now when it is in reset briefly in reset all of the outputs are reset to zero pins 1 input A and pin 2 input B are the serial inputs now they these two inputs go to an AND gate and I'm only using one input so I tie pin 2 input B up to 5 volts so that input is always active now input A on pin 1 is either high or low depending on whether the data push button here I've got that labeled data is either open or closed if that push button is open we have a high pulled up through the 10 kilo ohm resistor we go through this 100 ohm resistor and the forward bias diode into pin 1 of this SN74LS14N that's a Schmidt trigger hex inverter so when we have a high here pin 2 is low and we have a low on that serial input when we push this button closed we have a low applied to this point right here so pin 1 is low and now pin 2 is high so we can create the ones and zeros into the serial input by pushing that push button closed or opening that push button this circuitry right here is for switch debounce if I was to apply with just the pull up and this hex inverter and switch directly into pin A we would have chattering it's called switch bounce and we would have multiple data bits applied to that serial input when we only push this once so we have to use a switch debounce circuit and this is the best one that I have found works perfectly when I push this you have one high when I release it you have one low not multiple that you would see with switch bounce so this is called a debounce circuit it debounces that switch mechanical switches are real bad for bouncing uh, electrically bouncing I mean well they they do mechanically bounce which causes the electrical bounce <laughs> so we have this 10k pull up 1 in 41 48 uh, diode parallel with the 100 ohm resistor we have a 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor right here and then that SN 74 LS 14N Schmidt trigger hex inverter so that is the serial input now we have to clock the data through the 8 D flip-flops inside here so when we have the data applied to the serial input we have to clock it through these outputs and we do that with pin 8 clock pulse input and again we have this debounce circuit right here so when I push that and release it we have one clock pulse applied to that pin 8 clock pulse 
and every time I press that clock we have the data either a one or a zero here depending on whether this button is pushed right here the data will be clocked through these outputs the D flip-flop outputs and there's Q0 Q1 Q2 Q3 Q4 Q5 Q6 Q7 on pins 3 4 5 6 10 11 12 13 I have current limiting resistor at the outputs and it when this point right here is high it forward biases this LED and emits photons on pins 14 is VCC I have a 5 volts applied to pin 14 and ground on pin 7 there's the circuit <laughs> not too complicated the part that got complicated was the switch debounce but you gotta have that there to create the one and zero only once not multiple times through mechanical switch bounce <laughs> Okay, all right, and I'll put a little block diagram up at the end of the video of that SN74 LS164N. It's a very nice circuit, very nice circuit. You get and see a lot of circuits that we used to use in the olden days. Now, what would you do with this circuit? Oh, there's many things you could do. You could drive a seven segment display. You could clock the uh, eight data bits that would turn on either ones and zeros that would turn on the different segments of that seven segment display and then clock this eight times to send those eight data bits out to the seven segment display. And then you would have a, a transistor either cathode or anode driving it to ground and you would turn on that transistor that would enable basically current flow through all of the segments the transistor would be down here so we would have a uh, NPN transistor to ground so collector base emitter and the emitter going to ground and the base you would turn on once you got the seven segment display, the eight bits of the seven segment display loaded through the shift register, you would enable that seven segment display to turn on with that NPN transistor. Another thing you could do, you could go out here and turn on multiple optocouplers, for instance, that are uh, turning on high voltage outputs like maybe you have a a triac out there and you have a triac optocoupler and you want to load those um, eight optocouplers to turn on and turn off eight different triacs there's all kinds of things you could do with this circuit and you only need two inputs to turn on and off eight outputs it's amazing so if you had a small microcontroller for, for instance you could send eight data bits out there and clock those eight data bits uh, to do multiple on and off circuits with just two pins of your microcontroller very very versatile IC right there don't forget to master reset set everybody to zero so you can start out with a fresh slate and you could even drive this master reset from a microcontroller pin if you wanted to there you go <laughs> nice circuit nice circuit gets a little bit complicated right here but you got to do it you got to do it now you can eliminate all this if your data 
and clock comes from a microcontroller because microcontrollers don't switch bounce <laughs> there's no mechanical bounce on the output of a microcontroller just mechanical switches all right folks it's getting dark outside we got to go fill up the bird feeders it's getting cold around here we're going into winter did y'all see the full moon last night man that was amazing I like looking up at the sky the stars and whatnot Saturn and Jupiter just uh what well, back on the 21st was side by side I wish you I wish and hope you all got to see that that don't happen very often good night all enjoy the time with your families and we'll see you next time